welcome in this lecture i am going to explain three pass method for reading journal articles when you begin conducting independent scientific inquiry as say a graduate student doing your masters work or your phd work you are faced with the task of reading multiple research articles in fact you can get confused when you see large number of articles been published in the area of work that you have uh, taken your undertaken your investigations and for a beginner it's a tough task reading so many papers when we start reading any scientific document particularly when you are doing a transition from your undergraduate to graduate studies there is a problem because we are accustomed to reading textbooks and what we have been told is to read every word in the textbook carefully so uh if we start applying the same idea to large number of papers that we come across then we may not be able to conduct a scientific investigation in the given time so we have to come up with some way of quickly reading quickly scanning journal papers and then probably read only some of them in detail so how do we go about to quickly read a research paper professor keshav from university of waterloo has summarized a method has proposed a method uh which is a three pass method of examining a research article or a paper the first pass he calls as observation pass which probably Uh, would take five to fifteen minutes for an expert. Maybe if you are a beginner, say twenty minutes to half an hour. The second pass he calls as a judgmental pass, which again would take fifteen twenty minutes for an expert, or maybe half an hour for a beginner. The third pass is a detailed reading of a journal paper or a journal article. this can take few hours to few days so let's quickly look at each one of these steps the first pass is where you only observe a paper we just read the title we read abstract and introduction so abstract and introduction should tell you what is the problem being investigated what is the motivation behind doing this investigation what is the connection with the literature and so on then you browse through the section headings skip the contents just look at the section headings and directly jump to the conclusions conclusion section well what i mean is don't jump to any conclusion about the paper but directly jump to the conclusion section so in the first pass we quickly look at abstract introduction and conclusions so here we are not trying to pass any judgment about the work what are the notes that you should take you should note the following points the bibliographic details who are the communicating authors which university which institute which research organization which industry they come from what type of article this is is this a letter meant for a wider audience is it an original article which explains a theory or experiments in detail or is it a review article that collects body of work over few years what is the nature of work that is being discussed is it experimental work is this 
some computer simulation, is this some new theory being advanced, new model being proposed. You should record things like uh, digital object identifier, DOI. So this is a persistent URL for online documentation. You can share a, a DOI with fellow researchers so that they can precisely track, precisely reach the document that you are referring to. You should note down what is the broader area of the work. Look for the keywords. Look at the title and abstract and what you should note down from the first pass. From the first pass, you should be able to note down what is the main question being addressed in this scientific document and what is the answer provided. Is it some new observation being reported or is it some new hypothesis that is being advanced? Or it could be an existing hypothesis, an existing theory, an existing model being tested on a new system. So you should quickly record what is being done in this particular paper that you are reading. The first pass should not be critical. You should just objectively note down a summary, maybe in 30, 40, 50 words, and this should not take more than 15 or 20 minutes in the beginning or maybe half an hour if you are an absolute beginner. But let me break here and say something about the technical communication before I proceed to the judgmental pass. You will pass or you will proceed to the judgmental pass provided you think the question being asked and the answer being provided is worth looking at which also means that when you write a technical communication you should play a lot of importance to these aspects. You should write the abstract, you should write the introduction and the literature review part very very carefully. You should also write the conclusion very very carefully. Moving on to the second pass or the judgmental pass, here we should look at things like figures and illustrations. Well, if there is experimental work being reported, look for whether error bars have been drawn. What are error bars? If experimental work is being reported, what is expected out of the research group or the researchers? is to repeat these experiments several times and also report the spread of the result in terms of say mean and standard deviation, what are the possible errors in your observation. So this also tells you how carefully, how systematically the research group has conducted the observations. Small things like whether the axes are marked properly or not will tell you whether it's just a casual reporting or it's a thorough proper investigation. So figures being neatly drawn is an important aspect of any technical communication. Try to judge whether the problem has been stated clearly or not. Is the solution justified from what you know about the area? Is the approach taken, is the method used, is it justified? Do you think the methodology is appropriate? Now, to do this, you do not have to read the paper word by word. You can quickly get an idea looking at the method adopted, looking at the approach taken. You should also go back and look whether the author or the group of authors have published similar work. Look for the references or citations for this, the work by authors through uh, search engines like Scopus. Well, this can tell you two things. It can give you more confidence in the author's work. If the author or group of authors have published similar work, then you know that uh, they are well versed in the area. Also, it could be that the paper that you are reading, it could be an incremental embellishment, which may not be significant. So the author or group of authors may have published similar work and the one paper that you are reading, particular paper that you are reading 
could be just a small increment. So whether it's an important development with reference to their previous work or it's a small increment can be found only when you look at the previous work by the group of authors. Note down your judgment including the problems that you see and also the problem statement and a thesis in your own words. Again this judgmental pass should not take more than 10 or 15 minutes for an expert maybe and half an hour if you are a beginner. The third pass is the understanding pass. So now if you are read a paper through first and second pass and you think for your research purpose you need to understand every word, every sentence of this paper or you are given a task as a researcher to comment, to criticize, to review this paper then you would do this third pass. If you are doing your graduate studies, if you are a master's student, maybe you might end up doing this third pass for say 3, 4, 5 papers. If you are a PhD student, then you might do this third pass maybe for 10, 15 or maybe 20 papers. So reading a paper word by word, questioning every sentence is going to be done only for few papers. So even if you have a large number of papers to read, a detailed reading might be done only for a subset, a small subset of papers. So this pass involves understanding and reviewing, critically reviewing, something which is quite different from what you are accustomed to as an undergraduate student. When you read a textbook, we don't question what is being taught to us. Here, we are going to question every sentence, every line that has been written. So read the methodology very, very carefully. And not only that, read the relevant literature, go back to cited references, go back to the cited books, try to understand, try to read the background literature, read every sentence carefully and challenge the assumptions that are being made. What really helps is mental recreation of this work. So if you were to repeat this particular work, how would you proceed? Would you go in the same way? Would you adopt a different methodology? Would you alter the approach? Verify mathematical proofs whenever they form part of the paper that you are reading. Mental recreation of the work helps bringing in more clarity and more insight into the work that you are looking at. It also helps you to develop possible alternate approaches, also come up with extensions that are possible to improve this work. So purpose of this critical reading could be different. Uh, if you are a reviewer for the paper, you might be criticizing the paper, you might be bringing out, you know, we might be coming up with suggestions for improvement. If you are a research scholar, you are probably looking for improving the work, extending the work and so on. Is there any missed literature from your knowledge, from your reading, prior reading in this particular area? Have the authors missed out something? Write down overall purpose of the paper as you see it. What is the problem being addressed? What is the thesis? What is the hypothesis? What, is the, what are the models that are being uh, proposed? Does the introduction clearly state the problem or the thesis? Look at the body of work. Is the paper focused on the goal that it has set itself in the introduction? Are the reasons or the assumptions really justify the claim? Is there sufficient evidence and reliable evidence to support the claims support the reasons. Are the conclusions being properly stated? Is it a strong finish or some kind of a weak summary of the paper, weak summary of the work? Also, you should check, if you are a reviewer, you should check for things like uh, grammar, spelling, note down the typos, examine citations for completeness, for correctness and for formatting styles. And then write down your final comments. Are you convinced? Are you 
convinced about the hypothesis? Are you convinced about the reasoning? Are you convinced about the evidence provided? Now, the third pass is not only for reading others work, it is not only for reading someone else's paper. It is also important when you are writing a scientific article. Remember that somebody else is critically going to review your work and he or she is going to look at it from these criteria that we have just now looked at. So, when you write an article, when you write a research paper, you should read, you should review your own work through the same criteria that we have discussed just now. So, critically reading, critically reviewing an article is an important step in developing technical communication skill. Thank you.